Hello everyone, this is Carlota from Timescale and in this video I'm going to tell you how you can create and configure your first multi-node service in Timescale Cloud. For those of you who are not familiar with Timescale Cloud, it is our cloud native platform for TimeSeries data. It makes it easy to get started with Timescale DB, but at the same time you will still keep the ability to dive deep into your database and to truly understand how your data is being managed. In a couple of minutes, I will show you how you can set up your first multi-node service in Timescale Cloud, load data into it, and run your first query. However, for those of you who are completely new to multi-node Timescale DB, I'm going to first give you a brief overview of how the architecture works, so you can better understand the terminology I'm using later in the video. If you're already familiar with multi-node Timescale DB though, and already know all of this, feel free to skip this first part. You can check out the timestamps down below and jump right into the demo part. So let's start our explanation with a quick reminder of how Timescale DB generally works. When ingesting raw data, Timescale DB automatically partitions this data across the time dimension. We call each one of these time-based partitions chunks. And in single node Timescale DB, these chunks are hosted on the same instance and together they form what we call a hypertable. As a user, you interact with your hypertables exactly in the same way as if they were regular Postgres tables. And for the most part, you don't have to think about chunks or about this partitioning at all, as it is handled automatically by TimescaleDB in the background. This concept of hypertables in single node extends naturally to multiple nodes. In a multi-node TimescaleDB service, tables are still partitioned into chunks, but Instead of hosting these chunks all of the same instance, we now place them across multiple instances, forming what we call a distributed hypertable. As a user, you also interact with distributed hypertables as if they were regular Postgres tables. But now TimescaleDB is able to process your requests in parallel, giving you greater scalability and better performance. As I said earlier, in regular hypertables, your data is automatically partitioned by the time column. In distributed hypertables, TimescaleDB also partitions your data by one more dimension to help distribute the data evenly across the different nodes. As a user, the only thing you have to do for this to happen is to select an additional column when you create your distributed hypertable and your data will also be partitioned by the secondary column. In terms of the cluster architecture, a multi-node timescale DB will distinguish between two different types of nodes, access nodes and data nodes. The access nodes contains metadata about the cluster and the data nodes is where your data actually lives. When a request is made, the clients connect to the access node, who then connects to the data nodes as it knows which specific chunks are stored in which specific data node. These are the basis of how multi-node works in Timescale DB. So now I'm going to jump into the cloud console and show you how you can set up your first multi-node service, load data into it, and run your first query. You are not looking at the Timescale Cloud console. Concretely, this is the services page. To create our first multi-node service, the first thing we're gonna do is to click on create service here at the top right. This window pops up, giving us the option of creating a database with demo data or without it. For this video, we're going to stay in without demo data and click on advanced options. This will take us to the service creation page. So first, let's select our service type, clicking on multi-node. Next, let's select the AWS region in which we want our service to run. Now Timescale Cloud is available in the three main regions of AWS, and there will be more regions added in the future. And now it's time to configure our multi-node cluster. As you can see, the default configuration for the cluster is three data nodes with a compute memory and storage that you see in the screen, and one access node. But of course, you can easily change that. 
For example, to change the configuration of your data nodes, you can click on change here on the right and select exactly what you want. The number of data nodes, the compute per node, and also the disk size per node. With your compute, don't worry too much if you're unsure of what to choose because you can both increase it and decrease it anytime once your service is created. And for the storage, we recommend to start low and scale up progressively as your data grows. In a similar way, you can also select the initial compute and storage that you would want for your access node. Once you're done with your configuration, click on Create Service. While your service is being deployed, you will see this screen in which we remind you how to connect to your service once it's ready, how to create a distributed hypertable, and how to ingest data. Of course, you can find all this information in our documentation as well, but we wanted to give you a summary here so you can start quickly. Actually, you can download everything as a cheat sheet, so you can directly copy paste the comments you need later on. The screen also shows you the password to access the service. This is an auto-generated password, so you can change it later if you wish. Next, let's click on Go to Service Overview. This will take us to the overview page for our new multi-node database. As you can see, our service is already running, so let's connect to it and create our first distributed hybrid table. In order to do this, I'm going to use one of the simple data sets that we have in our documentation. Specifically, I'm going to use the one called Devices Ops which includes data representing metrics collected from mobile devices. We offer it in three different sizes, and we tell you how to import the information about the schema and example queries that you can try as well. If you also want to use this data set, you will find a link to this page in the description below. In my case, I have already downloaded this file. It includes two tables, an info table with metadata about the readings and a readings table with our actual sensor metrics. In terms of how to connect to Timescale Cloud, all the information you will need is displayed in the overview page. You will probably also need the password for your service, so if you forgot to write it down, remember that you can reset it in the operations tab. For this video, I'm going to use PG Admin to connect to Timescale Cloud, but you can use PSQL, Dbeaver, or any other Postgres interface. Now that I'm connected to PG Admin, I'm going to create our tables. First, I'm going to create a simple Postgres table called device info to host the metadata about our mobile devices. Next, I'm going to create a distributed hyper table to host our data. And in order to do that, the first step is also to create a regular Postgres table as the one you see here called readings. In order to transform this table into a distributed hyper table, the only thing we have to do is to run the create distributed hyper table command. Here we will select the name of our table, the table we want to convert into a distributed hyper table, then of course our time column, and lastly we will select another space column so that TimescaleDB can do this secondary partitioning that I was telling you earlier. Now we have our tables ready, so we can load some data into them. In order to do this, I'm going to simply use the import-export option in PG Admin, but in our documentation, you will find instructions on how to load data into Timescale Cloud through any other method. Make sure to check out the links in the description. Once we finish importing the data, we can see if everything has gone well by taking a look at our table.
everything looks good so to finish let's run one more query the query i'm writing in the screen will show us the top five busiest devices whose battery is below 33 percent and not charging this is one of the example queries we give you in our docs We'll get this information by joining our devices info table with our readings distributed hybrid table. And here you can see the results. This was all for today's video. I hope it was useful. If you want to try Timescale Cloud, you can set up a free trial on our website. It's very quick and easy and you don't need a credit card and you will have full access to the platform for a whole month. Thank you so much for watching.